Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to start a podcast. Let me explain. One, it's free. Boom. Amazing right off the bat, right? Two, there's a creation tool that allows you to edit your recordings right on your phone or computer. If what has stopped you from starting a podcast is that you think it would be too complicated, Anchor makes it easy for you to publish your first episode today, even if you're not techie. Number three, Anchor will distribute your episodes for you at a click of a button. The moment I hit publish, I'm on nine different platforms, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and many more. Number four, the other amazing thing about Anchor is that you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, meaning you can start making money from your podcast on day one. Anchor is everything you need to start a podcast in one place. With that being said, if you have ever wanted to start a podcast, Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey, decision makers, if you've ever struggled with insomnia, this episode is just for you. Welcome to the Deep Dive into Health podcast, where each month we dive deep into a health topic such as sleep, productivity, sex, and diet, to name a few with the goal of becoming the best version of ourselves with daily interviews. Now, before we get started, repeat after me. I play all out. I see opportunities where others see impossibility. I contribute to something bigger than myself. I stay focused and take massive action. I am unstoppable. I am a decision maker. Hey, Decision Makers, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. If you haven't heard of Audible, it's the easiest way to listen to audiobooks. If you don't have an Audible account currently, you can get a free audiobook today and a 30-day free trial to Audible as well. If you don't like it, which I doubt it, you can cancel before the 30 days are up and still keep the book. Isn't that amazing? There's a huge range of titles available, but I highly recommend you read Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's the closest thing to a must-read. Learn an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. Audiobooks are a great tool. We're constantly on the move, right? Well, with Audible, there's no need to sit down. You can listen while you're driving, exercising, taking a shower, pretty much anything. My favorite is while I'm doing chores around the house, like cleaning dishes. I honestly now look forward to putting clothes away because it's my time to learn. Another great thing about Audible is the ability to listen across several devices without losing your spot. I don't know about you, but I hate when I lose my spot in my book. Get your free audiobook and start your free 30-day Audible trial by going to audibletrial.com backslash John. Once again, that's audibletrial.com backslash Y-O-H-N. All right, decision makers, before we kick into today's episode, I have a special gift just for you. For many years, I learned and learned. I would read books and take courses, but my life was still the same. Over and over, I would hear the quote, knowledge is power. And then one day I heard Tony Robbins say, knowledge is not power. And it hit me like a lightning bolt. Knowledge is not power. It's what you do with that knowledge and the actions that you take that will change your life. It took me years, but now I have an action taking system and my life has never been the same. I believe this will change your life too. Go get your free action taking system at johndiaz.com. Again, that's Y O H N. D-I-A-Z. Once again, that's Y-O-H-N-D-I-A-Z dot com and download your free gift. Oh, and you'll also receive a weekly email with a summary of what the episodes for that week are going to be all about. Hey, decision makers, and welcome to the Deep Dive into Health podcast. My name is John Diaz, and today I am talking with Caitlin Gates. She is a registered nurse, certified personal trainer, and specializing in helping women overcome sleep issues. She started working as a registered nurse and wanted to find a way to make a bigger impact in her patient's life. She struggled with horrible insomnia for more than 20 years and could only sleep every other night for three to four hours. Through her work with many professionals and trials and error, she overcame her insomnia and is now helping other women do the same. Hey, Kaylin, welcome to the Deep Dive into Health podcast. Hi. Yeah, I'm glad to have you. Um, as always, we start off these podcasts by wanting to know the person a little bit better. So, Caitlin, can you please tell us what are you most grateful for right now? Right now, I'd have to say family and especially my dad, just because he's having a lot of health scares right now. And he re- I really admire him and his optimism. And so right now, I'm really grateful for my family oh, that, and that amazing. he's still around. 
Yeah, right. Sometimes we take those things for granted, but um, it's beautiful to hear Absolutely. that, right? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and what are you most excited about right now? Right now, I am most excited about my opportunity to help people with my sleeping business and to be able to work from home and build my own business and do my own thing. That's awesome, especially in a time right now where we're going through COVID and so many people are losing their jobs and getting stuff like that. Like, it's amazing that you're able to do that. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a lot more about that later. So I'm excited to, to hear about that. Cool. Sounds good. All right. So let's get started. The first thing I want to hear about is your story, right? Now you're the sleep expert. You're helping women. But who were you before this started? And I know in the introduction, you told us a little bit about your insomnia, but, but I want to hear, hear the story behind it. Well, before this, I was actually a registered nurse. Um, but the history behind my sleep is for a long, long time, I had really major insomnia. I actually could only sleep every other night for two to four hours, three to four hours at best. It was horrible. It was miserable. But yeah, I struggled with that for more than 20 years. Wow. And, and um, so that was something that you were going through. Did it happen to happen too with the, because you're a registered nurse where you're working like night shifts or... Or was your schedule a little crazy because of work or no? No, I mean, it actually started when I was a teen. Really? It started when I was really, really young. I had bad insomnia. And do you remember how it started or what caused it? Or No, not really. Um, it just used to be something my parents would laugh at and call me their night owl because I would never sleep at night. And they used to buy me like watches and stuff with owls on it. But we didn't really <laughs> know why. We just thought I was a night person or... Mm -hmm didn't really think of it as sleep issues. I'd just be up all night. <laughs> yeah. As any regular teenager. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. I hear you. Perfect. So, so what caused you to look for an answer or to shift things around? So as I started to get older and the problem continued, I was miserable and just having to go to school and work and suffer through this insomnia. I mean, there, I had to find something and figure this out. I mean, I've never had insomnia because can you give me a little deeper dive of what it feels like? Like, are you, are, <laughs> can you not focus? Like what, what, what kind of, what are the day-to-day -day things that you kind of like feel? Oh man. I mean, it's miserable. You feel like a zombie all day. You can't really focus. You're tired. Um, very lethargic. Um, no energy, just no drive. You just want to crawl up on the couch under a blanket and not move. That would and, be what I would dream about doing every day. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like me. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I, I, see, I see why you started looking for answers, right? So what was, the, what was that big aha moment for you that got you like, okay, this is, this is the answer to this problem? I mean, it, it took me a long time to figure it out. I worked with a lot of different experts and professionals um, I did a lot of my own research, researching all that I could, trying to find all the information um, and just trial and error of everything and figuring out what works and what hasn't worked. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it took a long time. Yeah. What, what were some <laughs> of those things that you tried that everybody was like, you got to try this and you tried it and I was like, nope, that, that does not work. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I don't know. People would say, drink the sleepy time tea or <laughs> simple <laughs> things like that. I'm like, it's a bigger problem than just drinking the sleepy time tea. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> or, or use this essential oil, things like that. That was a big common that, one. All those can be good in a combination with a bunch of other important techniques and habits that you can implement, but that alone wasn't going to do it. <laughs> was there one specific habit that like just changed you that was just like, this is the one? No, there's so many different habits and stuff that you have to implement and put together. It's a combination of it's a, a combination. bunch of things. Perfect. Yeah, there's no that. one thing that I can think of. Perfect. All right. So what's been the biggest achievement so far that you've been able to accomplish and, and who have you become on this journey? Biggest achievement so far, I guess, would be getting my business started, get it up and running and getting all the information in my head and in my computer together and putting the program together and trying to put it in a way that can help people and just being home and working on this business and oh. helping others. And, and who have and you become? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I've become someone with a purpose 
purpose and a clear vision of where I want to go and what I want to do. Oh, that's, oh, that, that gives me chills. That gets me excited. That's, that's what I love <laughs> people to do, right? Like I, I, I'm, I'm driven by, by helping people and seeing people do amazing things. All right. I believe that we all have like an amiss, um, amazing mission that we were put on this earth to do. And like, once we figure it out, like it lights us up and, and I love to see people light up and, and helping others, right? Serving others. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's amazing. All right, perfect. So now we're going to get into a section of the podcast where you give us some insights, some secrets, some things that we can do to improve our sleep, right? Like what are the things that, you know, um, someone starting, starting fresh new, you, you know, they've had 20 years of insomnia and they're coming to you and say, hey, like I'm, I'm having sleep problems. Like what are the three to five things that I could start doing today that are going to help? Okay. So there are a lot of things and there's actually a physical and a mental component to it mm. that you have to kind of put together. Um, I mean, there's so many things. How do you narrow it down? But one of the biggest issues that people don't realize is every use of technology. If I was just to give a few things for people to try is our technology at night actually emits like this blue light wave that signals to our brain that it's actually time to be awake, alert, and to not, not start to secrete melatonin, which is our sleep hormone. And that's what we need for our bodies to get ready for sleep is to secrete that melatonin. And we're actually preventing it or delaying it. So not using electronics at least an hour or two before bed um, is ideal. Um, just so you can try to stay away from that blue light. And if you can't, one of my tips is actually to buy some um, blue light blocking glasses. I was actually about to show them to you, but <laughs> this is a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't work that way, but you can put blue light blocking glasses on and it helps to block the light. Um, that's one of a million. The other one is just like your indoor lighting starting like around sunset in the evenings to kind of turn off the lights, dim them, start to mimic um, the natural light outside because light is actually is sending the signal to our brains that it's, it's, it's daytime, it's time to be awake. And again, it's affecting our melatonin and that shifts our circadian rhythm, which is like our sleep-wake cycle. So just trying to mimic the natural light outside. Um, the other is a lot of my a lot of my clients they complain about their brains just won't shut off at night. That's mm. a big complaint I get. Probably yes. one of the number ones. And something that I find helpful is what I call a brain dump. You may have heard of it. I saw you, you posted something about it recently. Yeah. <laughs> With a spelling error. I don't know if you saw that before. <laughs> Didn't I see that it. one. <laughs> oh, it said brain dumb. <laughs> it said brain dump. <laughs> anyway, um, you can do a brain dump before bed. Not too close to bed because it's going to kind of stimulate your mind. But a couple hours before bed, just when you come home from work, get everything out of your head. Write it down. And just get everything out of your head. That kind of helps. And of course... Um, the next one helps as well. Number four would be, is that number four? That This would be number four, yes. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, it's just finding anything relaxing to do before bed, um, whether it's meditation or light stretching. Um, it can be just reading a relaxing book, not some stimulating book, but just one that kind of easy read. Um just to help slow the mind and the body down. And then my last one um, is actually very important. A lot of people, it's to go to bed when you're actually tired. A lot of people try to go to bed mm. early. Yeah. They try like to go that. to bed early when they're not even tired. They're like, oh, I want to get some extra sleep. So I'll go to bed early and just so I can make up for the hours that I lost the other night. And, um, that can actually cause problems. You're not actually tired enough yet. So you're going to have trouble falling asleep. And then that's going to affect your quality of sleep for the whole night. Um, so even if you're not tired until really late, wait until then, then go to bed and you'll have a good quality chunk of sleep, good quality sleep. Um, 
Oh my God. I could go on and on with <laughs> no, more and more tips. <laughs> those were amazing. I'm actually going to recap them. I want to make sure everyone gets them right. Number one was to make sure that, um, you know, understanding that technology is, is, it's mimicking the outside environment. So if you have those lights on, try to try to avoid uh, electronics one to two hours before uh, sleep time. Uh, number two was mimic the, the light of the day, right? So once the sun is going down, start lowering, dimming the lights. That was great. Uh, number three was quiet the mind. And um, the tip that she gave here was to do a brain dump and just kind of get it all out of your mind. Uh, number four was to relax and slow down the mind. So whether you're reading a book, meditation, something like that, that's going to help you slow down the okay. mind. And number five is go to bed when you're tired. And um, I actually want to want to dig deeper into that one because I so far that you're the first one that gives me that one and I think that makes perfect sense right a lot of the times we we like to be so habitual and 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 say that hey we're gonna go to sleep go to bed before 10 and and, and we try to create all these routines but sometimes we just need to listen to the body right like the body knows what it needs and um so if, if we can dive deeper into going to bed when you're tired and um how you know maybe a story that you have or something that you can that this could uh we could dive a little deeper into it yeah, um, one thing I want to add on to that is a big problem with that is also if you're going to bed like, oh, I got to go to bed at this time every day and you go to bed and you struggle with sleep. Every time this happens, you start to associate your bed with stress and anxiety mm. from those trouble sleeping. And you may not even notice it when you're going to bed, but you have that stress inside of you. And then that starts to cause a bigger issue with your insomnia. And that's where you start to get the big chronic insomnia issues with all these habits that you're doing that aren't helping your sleep and then starting to associate the bed with stress and anxiety. And it just, it's a domino effect. And then it turns into a bigger issue. That's amazing. That's so why you it's not, sorry, I was just gonna say, that's why it's not something that could be fixed overnight. There's no quick fix for insomnia. It takes time and consistency, but anyone can, just about everyone can overcome insomnia. I promise you. I love that. Right? And, and one thing that I heard you say there was just the amount of pressure that we put on ourselves, right? Like we, we end up putting pressure on ourselves to go to sleep at a certain time. And that's what causes that stress to combine. You know, we, we start linking stress and, um, and sleep together and now we're thinking oh we got to go to sleep and out there stress so i thought that was brilliant thank you for sharing that that was really good um and as far as right like one of the things wh why i have you shared these stories and i want my audience to listen to this is to understand that you too can do this right there are going to be the naysayers out there that are going to tell you no i'm signing you some something that you're going to live with for the rest of your life and i want you to hear these stories like caitlin so that you understand that you too can do it right when people tell you you can you can stand up with confidence and say yes i can because there are people who have done it before me so that was amazing thank you for that all right, the Citizen Makers, now we're going to get into the third part of the podcast, which this is the lightning round. Kaylin, thank you so much for everything you're giving us. You're giving us some amazing stuff. Now, this part of the podcast, just give us a sentence to a word answer, something quick, um, and we'll run through these. Does that sound good? Yes. Perfect. All I'm right. excited. Let's yeah, do this. Yeah, good, good. There you go. That's <laughs> what I like to hear. <laughs> so the first one is, Kaylin, what is your favorite quote? It's more than a sentence, though. Oh, go for it. No worries. Go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of long. Okay. The only way that we can live is if we grow. The only way we can grow is if we change. The only way that we can change is if we learn. And the only way we learn is if we are exposed. And mm. the only way that we are exposed is if we throw, throw ourselves out into the open. Oh, I love that. Do you happen to know who said that? C. Boy Joy Bell. Oh, I, I don't love know what that. C stands for. <laughs> you know, Maybe Kathy? <laughs> Maybe I've heard that. Um, I've heard something similar to that, where it's like, you know, we the only way that we can learn is through experience and experience is caused by like failures or right? like when you go and you try things and you don't fail. But that was perfect. Thank you. That Absolutely. was awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> um, all right. And so question number two, what book has had the biggest impact in your life and why? That would have to be failing forward, which goes off of what you just mentioned, your favorite quote or one <laughs> of your quotes. So for me, I liked that one because I used to be very scared of rejection, fear of failure. I just didn't want to do things and go through that failure or through that experience. And I think I love the message that the book teaches you about using failure to as a way to learn and grow and 
it teaches you things and you can't get away from failure. You're, you're not going to be able to avoid it and you can just use it as a positive experience to get better. Oh, that's amazing. Right. And I, I also love that because that was a thing that changed in my life, right? The moment that I started seeing, um, right. Cause a lot of us, what we end up doing is that we analyze the whole life and we try to plan the whole thing out. And, um, one of the best ways that I've heard is kind of like a marathon runner, right. And there, there are the marathon runners that are stand at the line and try to map out the all 26 miles. And there are the ones, the ones that have no experience, no anything that just start walking. Right. And then eventually the ones, right. It's kind of like the, the hare and the turtle, right? Like sometimes you just got to start taking actions and you're going to learn through experience and failure. So that was, that was perfect. If you guys don't remember that the book is called failing forward. All right. Question number three, knowing everything, you know, now, right. About your sleep patterns and stuff, what advice would you love to go back and give yourself when you were just starting on this journey? When you were still that teenager related to sleep. Yes. Oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> Um, I mean, to seek help from the beginning. I mean, I really didn't understand. I just, we'd laugh at it. I'd be up all night and it turned into a big issue. If we would have dealt with it from the beginning and understood, I would have had a lot more sleep. I would have been a happier person. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's great though. Right. Cause all right. So many of us, we forget that, right? Like we see things and we're like, Oh no, that's just normal. Right. But if we can listen to our bodies and understand these things, we can seek help from the beginning and make a huge difference. Um, I love that. Right. I feel like you're, you're connecting great with people. Cause I know a lot of people in my audience right now are going to be like, yes, you know, that's me. And, and I need to take a step forward and do something about it. So thank you. And the last question that we have is what's the one question you're currently asking yourself the most, what keeps you up at night when you do stay up at night? <laughs> I guess it'd be focused on my business about like, am I doing everything that I can to help others that are suffering from insomnia and how to continually improve my program? Is there a better way I can create the program or approach it to help people more? Just continually improving. Right. That's perfect. To improve my course. That's awesome. Cause it sounds like you just want to help and serve others. And, and that's, what's, that's, what's keeping you up at night. How can I help and serve others? So I love that. So exactly. thank you so much. <laughs> so with that, Halen, this is the part of the podcast where you get to share with us your, you know, where, how we can learn more about you, your course, you know, where can we find you? Please tell us all about it. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me on my website, which is caitlingates.com which is spelled K-A-T-E-L-I-N-G-A-T-E-S.com. I'm sure you'll provide a link. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can find all, all about me on there and my story and what I do. And you can find me on social media on there. I'd love to connect with you on Instagram. And yeah. I hope to meet some of your listeners. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, I will definitely link everything in the show notes. Uh, but once again, Caitlin, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you so much for you know all your wisdom and you being honest and vulnerable with us and telling your, us your story. Um, it was a pleasure. And I know so many people are definitely going to benefit from this. So once again, just thank you for being on the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. All right, Decision Makers, that was an amazing episode. I'm so grateful for Kaylin coming coming onto the podcast and sharing these things with us. And uh, as always, I want to give you three takeaways, three things, three action items that you could take today to start taking action, right? Because I have told you before, right? I want you to hear these stories so that you believe that you could do it too, right? But once you start believing it, what well, the next step is for you to have the confidence to take the action. So I'm going to give you daily actionable, st actionable steps that you can take so that you can start building up the confidence. So by the end of the month, you've built up so much momentum, you have the confidence and you know that you can achieve it so with that being said let's get going we have three takeaways that i took right and these are things that we can start implement implementing into our lives today the first one was mimic the natural lighting right so try to understand that whatever's going out outdoors um and try to mimic that indoor so if you can start dimming the lights out at night and stuff like that i thought that was great Takeaway number two was quiet the mind. Try to figure out ways to relax the mind and quiet the mind when it's getting closer to bedtime. I right? should share some great tips about re either reading a book, taking a warm bath, um, you know, meditating. Find what's good for you, what you like, and think of ways to quiet the mind, right? While at the same time, avoiding those electronics about one to two hours before bed. I know that's a hard one, especially, you know, now that we live with our phone next to us, but it makes such a big difference, right? And the take, the third takeaway, the third thing that I think that we can start doing today is go to bed when you're tired. I think that was absolutely great, right? I know sometimes, um, I know personally, sometimes I'll go to sleep 
because I want to catch up on sleep, right? I, we we kind of think of that. Or I also go to, I, I'm tired, but don't go to bed because I have other things to do, right? So it's just understanding that. Like, try to understand your natural body and what your body's trying to tell you. If it's telling you that it's bedtime, go to bed. If it's telling you, hey, you still have a little more energy, get a few more things done, just try to, you know, figure that out. But anyway, guys, I think that was an amazing episode, Caitlin. I'm so grateful that you are on the podcast today. And I can't wait till you guys hear tomorrow's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't take your time lightly, and I appreciate that you made the decision to listen to the podcast today. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the show. And finally, please take a minute to rate and review the podcast. Once again, thank you for listening. And remember, you are a decision maker, and you are just confidence away.